Welcome back, folks. I'm Frizz, and today I would like to spend some time to talk to you about ability scores. Ability scores are the core of what makes every single PC in the entire game work. And also, you know, every monster and pretty much everything that moves. They really are the foundation that makes everything work, so I figured, yeah, let's take some time to talk about them and what exactly Paizo did to really make the ability scores in Pathfinder 2 be my favorite version of ability scores that I've seen overall. Let's just jump into it. So let's just cover the basics so everyone's at least on the same page. There are six different ability scores. You almost certainly know what they are, but they are Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. And the way that Pathfinder 2e gives you ability scores is you get ability boosts and ability flaws. Boosts increase your ability score by two, effectively increasing your modifier by one, and flaws reduce it by two, reducing your modifier by one. Obviously, the higher the modifier is, the better. So. You get ability boosts and ability flaws from your ancestry, your background, and your class, and then you also get four at level one just to boost any that you want. Additionally, you get some at level five, 10, 15, and 20 to really just sculpt your character to be what you want. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the implications of this system and exactly what does it give you? Well, first we have to talk about the way that other editions and other systems, you know, Work with ability scores. So the two main ways that ability scores are calculated in other systems is just rolling for them and also using point by. So rolling is the super classic way of calculating your ability scores and it is incredibly random, like beyond belief. And that's fun until it's not. <laughs> If you roll really terrible for ability scores and the rest of the party rolls well, then your character is kind of relegated to just not being nearly as fun, and that's just kind of sad. And the good thing about the way the Pathfinder does things is that it's super consistent and you can always ensure that your character is going to be effective in combat. Now, you can choose how high you want your primary ability score to be. You can come in with a 14 or a 16 or an 18. You just choose exactly what level of optimization you're looking for. And I like that. Now, point by, I feel is just worse than the way that Pathfinder 2e does it, because point by incentivizes you to actually lower ability scores that you don't think are important for the mechanical benefits of your class. If you're a fighter, you're not going to have a very high intelligence, are you? Because you don't need intelligence to really do much of anything as a fighter. That's why in Pathfinder 1e, if you're playing with point by, yeah, fighters are not going to have a very high intelligence. And eh, there are some benefits to that min maxi sort of nature of things, but I personally just prefer the way that Pathfinder 2e does it. And another important thing that makes the Pathfinder 2e ability scores really good is actually balance. Now, it's very hard, very, very hard to balance ability scores because they're all general descriptors of what it is exactly that a person is. So they're all different and they're all pretty vague and hard to understand, but still Paizo has managed to do about as good of a job as you can do. A big part of that is the difference between strength and dexterity. So strength and dexterity are two ability scores that are frequently compared and really live in the same sort of space as a lot of other effects because they both represent your physicality and as such frontline martial characters are going to be using both of them a lot. So let's hear me here. Let's talk about how Pathfinder 1e and D&D 5e compare strength and dexterity. In Pathfinder 1e, strength is basically just worse than dexterity. You use strength automatically for melee attack rolls and melee damage rolls, but you don't use it for many skills, only really climb and swim, and maybe carrying capacity, but a lot of campaigns just ignore that entirely. Compare that to dexterity, which affects your AC, your reflex saves, your... Uh, a lot of different skills that are very, very useful, and also, incredibly importantly, your initiative. 
and with a couple of feats, you can actually add your melee attack rolls and your melee damage rolls, and of course you always get your ranged attack rolls with dexterity. Basically, with just a little bit of investment, dexterity becomes a super stat that is just objectively better than strength. But if we're talking about super stats, we've got to talk about 5e, where automatically you can basically do everything with strength with dexterity. The only exception is, I believe, the athletic skill, but even then, that's only like one use, which is, it's not very good. Basically, that's a big problem that a lot of additions in game systems face, where, yeah, dexterity is better than strength. So what does Pathfinder do about this? Well, first off, what it does, it, it applies a lot of limitations to dexterity, while also giving it additional bonuses. So, what is, one of those big bonuses is that you no longer have to take a feat like in Pathfinder 1e to be able to use dexterity for attack rolls, for melee weapons. The downside to that is that the weapons that you can do this with automatically are going to deal less damage, and the way that the runes scale with weapon damage, it, that's going to be very, very impactful. And yeah, it basically means you're going to be doing less damage overall, but you get to use dexterity. Pretty good trade-off in my mind. And additionally, there's only one way in the entire game to be able to get dexterity to damage for melee, and that is being a thief rogue, and please, Paizo, for the love of god, never implement another way to get dexterity to damage, it's just too good. Another limitation that was added is changing initiative from being based off of exclusively dexterity to being based off of your perception, meaning that it's now based on wisdom. And the final limitation is now medium armor is just as good as light armor, and heavy armor is actually better, meaning if you want to have the best defense you can have, it's going to be with heavy armor rather than focusing on just being incredibly dexterous. Not everything is good though, as there is one ability score that is unfortunately a little bit worse than the others, that being intelligence. If you're not playing a class that actively uses intelligence for its class features, like a wizard, an alchemist, or an inventor, intelligence just doesn't have nearly as much of a use as the other mental, physical, or really just any of the ability scores. It gives you a couple skills that you're trained in. If you get it at level one and you have a decent end at that point, then you get some skills. And it also just, you know, boosts intelligence skills, which there are a fair amount of. But for a lot of characters, those skills aren't going to be important, which means that intelligence is unfortunately a skill that, or ability score, that just isn't going to be increased by a lot of characters. Now, I'm not a game designer, so I wouldn't know exactly how to fix that, and any changes that I recommend are probably going to be a little bit broken. But for instance, you could say, oh, if you have a plus three intelligence modifier at level one, you get an additional skill feat. Something like that wouldn't be broken, but it would still make it you a little bit more incentivized to actually get a good intelligence. Regardless of that though, I think that it's clear that I really, really like the way that Pathfinder 2e does ability scores, and yeah, I mean, you got me. I made a video about Pathfinder 2e ability scores and I like them. What a shock. But I just feel like it's very consistent and allows you to make pretty much any character that you want. and. The thing is, you get to choose the level of optimization that you're looking for. If you want to play a Barbarian with a 16 or even a 14 strength, you can do that. And instead, you'll be getting bonuses in other areas. Point by is the epitome of min-max too. You can choose to lower one ability score to make another higher. Where I feel like the ability score system in Pathfinder 2e really kind of gives you the maximum without making your character really, really bad at certain things. You are never going to see characters that are like, well, my job is to hit things in the party, therefore my charisma will be a 7 just so I can increase my strength by one point. And I like that. So, yeah. 
Thanks for watching. I hope that the video itself is a little bit better this time as I'm figuring out this whole VR thing. Also, who knew that green screens were much, much simpler than you'd think, especially when you're in a virtual environment that is literally entirely green. Regardless, uh, what do you think about how do we handle ability scores? I know that I've had mixed feelings about actually rolling for stats in the past, but I know that some people just want to stick by it just to it being exciting and the tradition of it. Also, I feel like the system that Dewey uses felt fed against the kind of people who want to min-max uh, the point by system just by dumping all their unnecessary stats to 7, and that's a bit of a pain whenever you're in a party with someone who plays like that, so I just really like this system. Regardless of all of that, though, until I see you next, live a wonderful life.